So here are a couple of other things that I've learned the hard way, and mostly they come from books. So people have spent their lives studying important things, and maybe we can learn something from them for less than the cost of a meal at McDonald's. And one of the books I read, I really found interesting and helpful, is How to Argue and Win Every Time by Jerry Spence. Now, cutting to the chase, he's a trial lawyer, by the way, uh, undefeated. Now, that might mean he just picked cases that he couldn't lose, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt. So, when, and arguing doesn't mean fighting. It's something different. Read the book. It's important. Uh, the main thing I learned from this book is that the, f the first thing you must do to argue and win every time is counterintuitive. You have to empower the other person to reject your argument. You've got to tell them they won already. And then instead of preparing a rebuttal, they're actually listen. They'll actually listen to what you're saying. And he illustrates it like this, you know, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, you have the power to convict my client. And uh, that's a sacred uh, uh, charge, which I uh, uh, respect. And uh, I look forward to your wise judgment. And, uh, uh, you know, and from some of the things I've heard in the courtroom today, I'd convict him. But while I wait for your wise judgment, may I ask you to consider the following points. He wasn't there. There's no reliable witness. There is no actual evidence against him. It's all circumstantial, but I wait for your wise judgment. Another thing he points out, that there are about 10 different things that he makes, points that he makes. One of them is eliminate one side of the argument. This is very powerful. I've used it before. People don't know what to do when you agree with them, when they're ready for a you know, good old fashioned uh, argument. Uh, you know, you, we have common interests. You want to buy something, I want to sell something, and we both want to see a successful project, uh, you know, like that. So uh, I, I really strongly uh, recommend this book, and it's a fun read also. And also in the vein of negotiating and selling and so forth, there are lots of books out there. Uh, I've read a few of them, you know, getting to yes, getting past no. Um, I learned from these books uh, and from other people that, <clears throat> you know, in a technical world, when you have a technical idea that you're trying to sell to somebody or get them on board. Uh, if you're speaking to technical people, emphasize features. If you're speaking to non-technical people, emphasize benefits. You have to know who your audience is. Uh, uh, and Spence talks about that too. I said before, uh, uh, you need to know who you're arguing with. Uh, if you're arguing, the engine which drives business is a generation of income. The engine which drives government is the maintenance of power. So those are two very different entities and they require different approaches. And another thing I found really useful, which I'm, Try to, I try to use, but I need to read it again, is how to get your point across in 30 seconds or less. It's a skinny little book, lots of really uh, practical ideas in there for like almost no money. But the, the best one by far of all of how to deal with people is this by Dale Carnegie. It's an ancient book. It was first published in 1936, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Like, it's fun to read. It's interesting to read. The, the, just the chapter titles would drag you in. Like, here they are. Part one, fundamental techniques on, in handling people. Part two, six ways to make people like you. Part three, how to win people to your way of thinking. Part four, be a leader to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. Like, you know, and at the end of, at the end of every chapter, he gives a summary. Here's what I just taught you in a little box. These points, how, how to make people like you, the sub chapters are interesting, how to make people like you instantly and appeal that everyone likes. These are titles of, sub, of, of parts in the section. Uh, how to interest people, uh, how to get cooperation. And he, and he delivers on all these things. I have to add this one small part from Dale Carnegie's book. It perfectly illustrates the, 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 the character of the book and the contents, and it only adds a minute to the video. So reading from the text, page 24. A member of one of our classes told of a request made by his wife. She and a group of other women in her church were involved in a self-improvement program. She asked her husband to help her by listing six things he believed she could do to help her become a better wife. He reported to the class. I was surprised by such a request. Frankly, it would have been easy for me to list six things I would like to change about her. My heavens, she could have listed a thousand things that she would like to change about me, but I didn't. I said to her, let me think about it and give you an answer in the morning. 
The next morning I got up very early and called uh, the, the florist and had them send six red roses to my wife with a note saying, I can't think of six things I would like to change about you. I love you just the way you are. When I arrived home that evening, who do you, uh, who do you think greeted me at the door? That's right, my wife. She was almost in tears. Needless to say, I was extremely glad that I had not criticized her as she had requested. The following Sunday at church, after she had reported the results of her assignment, several women with whom she had been studying came up to me and said, that was the most considerate thing I have ever heard. It was then that I realized the power of appreciation. So <clears throat> anyway, all that to say, if you look at books, you can find some really interesting stuff in there. And if you really want to understand people, <clears throat> I strongly urge, I highly recommend my favorite author, Steven Pinker. He is a cognitive scientist and he is interested in the properties of the human mind. The mind is what the brain does. So start with how the mind works and then go to the blank slate. Uh, these are masterpieces. Uh, but the best one I, of all, the most powerful book I have ever read uh, is called, by him, called uh, The Better Angels of Our Nature. And it is a beautiful illustration of how to present the evidence for a reasoned argument. Uh, and, and he's a linguist, so the writing is just fabulous. He tells you right at the beginning of each chapter, this is what I'm going to tell you, these are the hard parts, this is what it means, let's go. So these are some of the things that I've learned from books. I hope it helps.